I'm sure there's going to be questions and comments. Yes, Felice. Felice. Tony, in your practice, uh, now in Italy, and I think in the States, we have an advanced age of our first baby. The couple comes when they are 35, 36, so yes. they know already that the fertility is reduced. What is the percentage of stress in this couple? Is what in your experience, are those couples more stressed than the young one, or uh, what is the social influence, the educational influence on, because you compared also Sure. American. Sure. I, I think by the time they come to us, uh, and most of the time these are, this is stress related to the infertility itself as opposed to being mm -hmm. infertility related to chronic stress. Okay? So that when they come, they are optimistic. Yes, they realize that given their age, they have a more difficult problem. Okay? And for these patients, again, we go through the basic pathophysiology of infertility, the things that can go wrong, okay, and in addition to the usual problems, organic and hormonal, there is the genetic problem, i.e. ovarian reserve compromise, and that is a problem. Uh, and uh, 35, 36, 37 is a problem, but not as much as 40, 42, and 42, as you well know. So, and we have the same problem in the States, unfortunately, that women focus on their career for most of their lives, and then once they've achieved their success and they're now comfortable, they decide we want to start a family, and by that time, it may be a little late for these women. What's unfortunately also, we see a much more advanced degree of endometriosis in these women, okay? Because uh, many times, the endometriosis pain is tolerable enough that these patients will not be bothered with it until they try to get pregnant, and when they come in, they will have not only the additional age, and also they have the endometriosis that affects their reproductive organs, especially the ovaries, and that too can decrease the ovary reserves. So it is a problem, it's a major problem with them. Uh, we are somewhat fortunate in the States that we allow egg donor, and we have a, quite a great supply of that. Uh, and uh, many women, uh, despite their culture, background, or their religion, are very accepting of that nowadays. Not as accepting universally, but many of them are, in fact, very accepting of that. Yes, over there. Yeah, yeah thanks, Tony. This is sort of an odd question, but we've heard earlier this morning about TGF beta family members and adhesion formation. Um, pregnancy is such a challenging endpoint. I'm kind of curious, and you would probably know this data better than anyone. Have there been any surgical studies um, looking at adhesions, maybe back in the days of second look operations and stuff, that might address the question of sort of stress and surgical outcome? Um, I'm not aware of data like that, but it would be sort that, of an That's interesting an interesting question, question Rob. Um, I guess what you're asking me is, uh, is the stress, nature of stress, degree of stress, more likely to cause uh, adhesions, more adhesions. I don't have any experience with that, but I do have experience with endometriosis, which is very interesting. It's anecdotal, but I want to share it with you because uh, it, it made my thinking about endometriosis uh, quite different. Uh, I was at the University of Iowa at that time teaching, and I was called to the uh, operating room by uh, a general surgeon who was operating on uh, the coach of the basketball team of Iowa, the female coach of the basketball team of Iowa, for a gallbladder. And he found that her ovaries were a little bit funny looking, uh, and he asked me to look at them. And she was slightly overweight, she had polycystic ovaries, but the rest of her pelvis was completely clean. That year, the University of Iowa basketball team had a very, very poor outcome, didn't do very well. About six months later, the same patient came to me because she had severe pain, severe dysmenorrhea, etc. She had huge endometriomas. Uh, I did a laparoscopy, she had endometriosis pretty much everywhere, and only six months before she did not. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering whether or not the stress that she was going through uh, mm -hmm. might have contributed to that, okay? That led me to think about endometriosis and stress and the immune response. As you know very well, endometriosis blocks the immune response, okay? But if the immune response is strong enough, it can probably hold endometriosis in check. But if the immune response is decreased by stress, whatever, or medication, endometriosis may win. 
I mean, that's my thought. And maybe you could just think about it and maybe you can tell me. I don't know anything about it. I mean, she also, but, but that, I think that stress has something to do clearly with endometriosis, whether or not it promotes adhesions, I really can't tell you. Could I ask you one quick uh, question? So in the context of stress and infertility, you predominantly focus on the female, which I understand, but how about stress and fertility in the male? Uh, actually, I try to focus on both, and I very much demand that both members of the couples come in. I think the manifestation of stress on the woman is a lot easier, much more mm -hmm. obvious, much more evident. As I sort of pointed out, uh, the man doesn't cycle, so he doesn't miss cycling and menorrhea. He may notice his decreased libido, and libido has so many different influences, it's influenced by so many things, that it's really hard to pinpoint whether it is due to the stress of the infertility itself. Uh, but I, again, stress can affect men mm -hmm. very, very much so. One of my patients, when I was in Boston, while I was working them up for infertility, the men developed complete alopecia, total body alopecia, which was felt to be related to stress. Mm -hmm. So these men suffer just as much as women, I believe, uh, from the stress. They just don't manifest it quite as obviously. They usually say, it's my wife that's stressed out and so on, but they are as equally stressed, I think. What do you think, All Sarah? Right. Sarah's shaking, yes. Uh, I, I think we should stop here and move on. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome.